Hello everyone, my name is Keats Meyer and I'm the Executive Director of the Madison Square Park Conservancy. On behalf of the board, the staff, and all park goers, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to the Conservancy's 40th Commission, Abigail DeVille's Light of Freedom. Abigail's work is in the park for you to visit and to be inspired by. Over these last months, Madison Square Park has become an ever important public space. We have remained open uh, throughout the pandemic when much of New York City is closed. We have served many, a, a broad range of audiences um, and park goers from children and families, artists, workers, students, musicians, um, all come to the park for respite and relief. We also are a place where protesters gather before and after marches. Um, it is a point of pride for us who work at the Conservancy that our team has maintained a beautiful site for so many different kinds of needs. And now it is, it is a true privilege to be the site for Abigail's um, Light of Freedom work. Madison Square Park Conservancy is a public-private partnership with the City of New York. I would like to thank Commissioner Mitchell Silver of the Parks Department and Jonathan Kuhn, the Director of Arts and Antiquities. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce Ron Pizzuti, who is a member of our Board of Trustees and is the Commissioner, I'm sorry, the uh, Chair of our Art Committee. Thank you. Thank you, Keats, and greetings to everyone. As a park neighbor and Art Committee Chair, is, it is exceptionally gratifying to be celebrating the opening of Abigail DeVille's Light of Freedom and to witness the unfolding and planning of this important work. I congratulate the artist on her meaningful project. Public art inspires and motivates, provokes and challenges. Light of Freedom is introspective and exultant. It considers and confronts pressing issues in contemporary life, culture, society, and politics. Our public art program demonstrates the range of contemporary practice today. Abigail reaches into history and the present, and she stands to guide park goers of what can be accomplished in the public realm today. I'm now pleased to introduce Patricia Blanchett, who with the Ed Bradley Family Foundation, joins all of us in reflecting on light of freedom. Thank you, Ron. I'm thrilled to support through the Ed Bradley Family Foundation, the realization of this important public art project in Madison Square Park. Congratulations to Abigail DeVille on shedding light on black history and on our contested collective present through her powerful sculptural work. Abigail is interrogating the very nature of freedom in America, past and present. Who here gets to be free and why? I can't help but be reminded of Toni Morrison's powerful missive, the function of freedom is to free someone else. Through my work with the foundation, we have, amongst other goals, affirmed the role and necessity of public art. At its most impactful best, public art can function as public education and public action. In 2018, the mural arts program in Philadelphia created a mural crafted by artist Ernel Martinez and community participants in memory of my late husband, legendary journalist, Ed Bradley. Through his incisive work, Ed shed light where there was darkness on the most significant stories of his day. We relied on him to help us make sense of our complex world, aspirations, and struggles. Just as we now look to Abigail to bring her affirmation and introspective to the public art platform of Madison Square Park. As Ms. Morrison said, if you have some power, then your job is to empower somebody else. That's what Ed did for decades. And that's what Abigail is doing today with her work. This is a challenging sculpture, one that will convene individuals and communities to look closely at the meaning in the work and to think through their individual interpretation. That is the role of public art. I join all of those at Madison Square Park Conservancy in congratulating Abigail and in welcoming the community to see light of freedom. It is my pleasure to introduce Brooke Kamen Rappaport, Deputy Director and Martin Friedman, Chief Curator. Thank you so much, Patricia, and thank you, Keats and Ron. Um, during this turbulent 
period, the manifold roles of a public park continue to take shape and become even more conspicuous. The communities who gather um, on Madison Square Park seven acre site demonstrate the adaptability of public space in an urban center like New York City. And we look to artists like Abigail DeVille to guide and sustain meaning uh, of civic space with her sculpture, Light of Freedom. Abigail was born in 1981 and maintains a studio in the Bronx. She received a BFA from the Fashion Institute of Technology, attended Skowhegan School of Painting and Sculpture, and uh, received an MFA from Yale in 2011. She's participated in residencies at the International Studio and Curatorial Program in Brooklyn, the Studio Museum in Harlem, the Radcliffe Institute for Advanced Study Fellowship, Robert Rauschenberg Foundation in Captiva, and the American Academy in Rome, Rome Prize. She's on faculty at Maryland Institute College of Art in Baltimore and will be teaching at Yale School of Art this spring. Abigail participated in Madison Square Park Conservancy's 2019 symposium, Innovating Public Art. She has exhibited at the Contemporary Art Museum St. Louis, Institute of Contemporary Art in Los Angeles, the New Museum and the Stedelijk in Amsterdam. This project is the most accelerated we have planned and implemented in the history of the Conservancy's public art program as we pose the question of how can public art respond to this unprecedented period. Abigail has answered with a powerful work made of her signature materials of found objects. Light of Freedom carries cogent symbols and I'll let Abigail describe this to you. Um, <clears throat> but I should mention that the project is a 13 foot high reference to the Statue of Liberty's uh, torch and flame that were displayed in Madison Square Park between 1876 and 1882. She has filled them uh, with a reused well-worn bell and the arms of mannequins. Abigail mines untold histories in public space for the subject matter in her work and has conjoined significant crossroads in African-American history in New York. This sculpture is inspiring and introspective. The artist recognizes and hallows the earliest enslaved Africans who were brought to New Amsterdam in 1626. And she critiques the promise of American liberty and justice for all. Works of art can help us to interpret a period or to make sense of it. This is a time when Abigail DeVille has shed light the light of freedom on a collective reckoning and convening around communities and histories. We can't proceed further without acknowledging the generosity of many people involved in supporting our program of public art. Leadership support for Light of Freedom is made possible by the Ford Foundation. Major support is provided by Candy and Michael Barish, Suzanne Deal Booth, Ed Bradley Family Foundation, Harold and Colleen Brown Family Foundation, the Lumpkin Bocuse Family, Stardust Arts, and the Andy Warhol Foundation for the Visual Arts. Additional support is provided by Eve Biddle, Ingrid Sinkala Gilbert, Shauna Gallancy, Stephanie Joyce and Jim Voss, Rebecca Kramer, Charles Moffat, Catherine Sippen, Sarah Stein Sapir, and Anonymous. Major support for our art program is provided by Sasha Bass, Bunny and Charles Burson, Toby Devon Lewis, Ron Pizzuti, Thornton Tomasetti, Tiffany and Company, Anonymous, and by funds from the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs in partnership with the City Council. Substantial support is provided by Sharina Endowment Fund, Italy, Helen Frankenthaler Foundation, Jacques and Natasha Gelman Foundation, the Saul LeWitt Fund for Artist Work, Madison Square Park Conservancy Art Council, Audrey and Danny Meyer, the New York Edition, the Rudin Family, and Sorgente Group of America. Additional support is provided by 400 Park Avenue South, Irving Harris Foundation, Lenore Tawney Foundation, and Fernand Leonard, Leonard Tesler. Our thanks to Materials for the Arts. I wish to acknowledge Sheila Davidson for her distinguished governance as board chair and Keats Meyer, who as executive director offers enduring support and guidance to this program. Special acknowledgement to the devoted and brilliant members of the Conservancy's Art Committee and our chair, Ron Pizzuti, 
and to our engineer, Chris Ward from Thornton Tomasetti. My colleague, Tom Reedy, is always outstanding in planning and implementing our projects. And thanks to our colleagues, Nicole Rivers, Dana Klein, Andy Cherzano, and Hannah Sturz, Deep Gastani, and Rosina Roa. We thank Nicole Berry at the Armory Show and Eric Shiner at Pioneer Works, and our fabricator, Kurt Wolfmeyer, and Abigail's colleague, Spencer Baron Seres. I'm also thrilled to announce that following its stay in New York, Light of Freedom will travel to the Momentary at Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art in Bentonville, Arkansas. And now it's my great honor to introduce you to Abigail DeVille. Thank you, Brooke, for that. We are living history. The voices of countless Americans have put their bodies and lives in harm's way to show up and out for their neighbors, their fellow brothers and sisters in struggle. The events of the last eight months and the storm clouds approaching have taken most of us by surprise. What is not surprising is the resilience and compassion demonstrated by the continual Black Lives Matter protests which started in 2013. An article written by Edith Evans Asbury and published in the New York Times on December 7, 1977 says, 18 years after Minuit purchased Manhattan in 1644, 11 black slaves petitioned the Dutch West India Company for their freedom and possibly to their own astonishment got it. All of the free slaves may not have been the same 11 who came to New Amsterdam in 1626, but at least four of them were. These four, whose names probably indicate their country of origin were Paulo D'Angola, Simon Congo, Anthony Portuguese, and John Francisco. This project seeks to say the names and stories lost in the tide of history. And part of the fundraising efforts for the Statue of the Liberty pedestal, Emma Lazarus wrote the New Colossus in 1883. Her now famous words, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, the tempest tossed to me. I left my lamp beside the golden door. This is still true, but there is struggle. Let me give you a word of the philosophy of reform. The whole history of, pro of the progress of human liberty shows that all concessions yet made to her August claims have been born of earnest struggle. The conflict has been exciting, agitating, all absorbing, and for the time being, putting all other tumults to silence. It must do this or it does nothing. If there is no struggle, there is no progress. Those who profess to favor freedom and yet depreciate agitation are men who want crops without plowing up the ground. They want rain without thunder and lightning. They want the ocean without the awful roar of its many waters. Frederick Douglass, August 3rd, 1857. Thank you to Madison Square Park Conservancy and everyone who gave to make this possible. I can't thank you enough. I'd like to pass it back to Brooke. Thank you, Abigail. Thank you for your remarks and for Light of Freedom. It is an extraordinary sculpture. Of course, we invite everyone listening to Madison Square Park to see Light of Freedom, which will be on view through January, 1st, uh, January 31st, 2021. Thank you all for joining us this evening. <laughs>